Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have another game controller. Uh, deviation from the typical test equipment that we repair here on the channel, but electronics nonetheless, and should be pretty interesting to repair. Uh, this one is on the bench, as this is unobtainium anymore. Uh, and it's for a rock band setup. But uh, you can't buy them new anymore. Very uh, early 90s vintage, if I have been told correctly. Uh, and it's also kind of fitting because the channel started with a game controller, so we'll continue to do it. And we'll keep looking. So, the way this works, this USB cord is the data, and we pull power off of this PS2 port, and I have been told this did work at one point in time, which is Troubleshooting 101. Always assume it has worked at least once. But uh, it quit working, and it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Now what it should be doing, as we can see we have a green light here, uh, it should be going through a LED test on the lights. Now I do know if I switch the USB cables, I can hot wire it and it will fire up the lights. So we have seen that function and actually work. Well, that tells me a few things without even opening it to start with. Uh, I am specifically, especially since this is early 90s vintage, and I'm given the way it's behaving, if I take a high current USB, hotwire the uh, data line, and it uh, will fire up and will start working. So what that's telling me is we probably have some capacitors that we need to change. As typical on this channel, we change quite a few of those. So let's get into this thing, get underneath this board. Here's the, uh, this top cover is telescopic, but this one actually comes out, I think, yep. And here's our LEDs. So uh, let's get into this, see what we can do to repair it. Well, I was not expecting surface mount capacitors, and now I'm going to have to order some because I don't have any that will fit this, this configuration. Uh, this electrolytic, this one, this one, and this one are all testing very poor. This one's testing OK, and that one's testing OK. These are testing at 10 microfarads, which they are. These are testing at 40 microfarads, which is way off in the rails. They're all 10s. So I think we do have a bad capacitor situation, especially given that we can get the board to boot on occasion. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to get some caps ordered, and we'll have to work on getting these replaced. Uh, but I have to get some surface mount 10 mics. And that is something the lab is typically not stocked with. But if I start repairing more boards, I may have to get some of those in stock. All right. Parts are in. And we have one already on the board. I took the temporary big electrolytic capacitor off and popped one of these micro parts on the board. You guys can actually tell is... This is the one that we've already replaced, and I have to do these couple left. This cap will stay a large capacitor, because that's what it was to start with. Just got to keep going to get this controller in. I'll bring you guys back partially through the process. I really need to get a better lens. This lens does not give me enough depth to film the micro soldering or anything like that, so I really need to get a microscope so I can do some capture, so I can actually film some of this micro soldering stuff and get some more things on camera. Those are future plans for the lab. So if that's something you're interested in, absolutely stick around. We'll be showing some more of that as soon as we're able. I also need a good macro lens for this camera too. So I want to take some macro photography, but the problem is the working distance for macro lenses is very, very short. And I have very little working distance around the board. I mean, to give you an idea of the size, that's a two watt resistor for scale. So these are very, very small parts. Uh, I think the spec on these capacitors was four millimeters on the barrel. Yeah, just really tiny parts. Um, this is taking a lot longer than it should for this specific repair. Some stuff happened in the life side of the fence that um, locked everything up for a couple of weeks and made everything not move. We had some events that were not that great, but we're working through them. Uh, and things are getting back to normal, and we are uh, going to be plowing forward again. But uh, 
yeah, instead of the parts taking three days, uh, the short the short answer is instead of the parts taking three days, the parts took three, uh, two and a half weeks to get here. Uh, that was not the part house's fault. That was some stuff that happened on the back end. But regardless, it happened, and we're working through it. Okay, this is about as close as I can get you guys with this camera and this lens, but I do have some faults. Like, if it, it's one of those of, am I doing enough? Am I not doing enough? Is It's one of those things that always goes through your mind as a repair tech. Well, it turns out uh, th replacing these capacitors was a good call. It looks like I have some pad damage, and I have some, uh, uh, some electrolytic leakage that's starting to eat this board, so we're catching it in time. But I do have... Right here, a damaged pad that I need to fix. So the problem with this damaged pad is, I believe, without schematics, but just kind of looking at the board under a microscope, uh, it's power rail for the processor chip, which is under this black blob. So what we've got is we've got a pad here that's coming up under this resistor, coming through here, and then it was using the positive side of the capacitor pad to pass over onto this pad. So what I'm initially thinking about doing is I got a little bit here that I can put the cap on, and I got a little bit here that I can put the cap on. That'll work. But then I still got to fix this trace and get it to come over here. This is made far more difficult with this um, interconnect pin because there's, there's very little room to work here. But what I'm thinking about doing is we're thinking about jumping, jumpering this pad over to this pad, which will complete this trace just in a different way and still give me the capacitor, which is probably a decoupling cap for this um, IC that's under that's hiding under here. But if I don't get this pad fixed, because uh, from here it comes back in and then right around here dives underneath here, uh, it's probably not going to start up and it's not going to work right. So we got to get this pad fixed to bring this back into service. All right, let's do a test of our factory installed bodge wire, actually technician installed bodge wire. Uh, this is looking better already. We actually have a green light, so the micro is starting up. But we'll give it some power and we'll see if the LEDs run their test sweep. Give the LEDs their additional power, like so. And push a button. Huh. All right. Let's see if it'll boot completely if we plug it into data second. Okay. What's not working there? Oh, well, that's doing things, actually. Yeah, that's doing things on the computer, so it's working. Okay, well, I saw it fire the test pattern twice as the computer rebooted. So what's going on is it's it's actually got a driver on Windows 11, but this SK Lightworks and Windows 11 is very, we'll call it cranky. Uh, the controller's act uh, causing things to happen on the computer. So the micro is booting up, everything's working. As I reboot the machine, as the DOS drivers load, it goes through its light test pattern. As Windows loads, it goes through its light test pattern. But the drivers are too far installed, which is why it'll only just grab player one and go from there. So everything is working. Our uh, board repair, bodge wire, is actually functioning as expected. And the micro is booting up and, and working. So, we need to finish up the cap replacement, and then this one might actually be close to done. All right, here we are, board repaired. Here's our trace repair that's holding up nicely. These were the, these were the last two capacitors that I needed to replace. So, it, at this moment in time, this board is actually repaired and ready to go back into service. Hopefully, got to do one more power-up test, but I got to reboot the machine to do that. So, But, because there's nothing left to do, I'm going to put the whole thing back together being relatively optimistic, uh, I used much gentler techniques on these two capacitors than I used on the first two capacitors, especially after this one showed up with um, electrolytic damage to the board. 
So uh, definitely softened up the approach, and uh, the repairs went much smoother after that. I had to walk the capacitor off the board, so I had to heat this side of the pad. Uh, I had to heat this side of the pad, bring it up, heat this side, bring it up. And that took about three times, and the capacitor just walked off the pads, uh, reducing the risk of ripping the pads off because the underlying substrate's been compromised by some uh, caustic electrolytic. So, electrolyte, I should say. Electrolytic capacitor, electrolytes, what's doing the eating. Yeah, let me put this all back together, and then we will uh, run through one more test, but then I think this one's done and ready to go back. Wow, that's kind of a pain to put back together. Uh, the daughter board has to be screwed in before the main LED panel board goes on top, so getting everything lined up is, uh, is uh, fun and challenging. Just be aware if you ever have to take one of these things apart. I've set the computer to reboot. We should see the test pattern hit twice if everything is operating as expected. But let's see what happens. Okay, so the connection to the computer's gone off. The drivers have shut down. This should start blinking a bit. It'll see USB connection, but there's no drivers, and that's when it does the test test pattern to say, hey, I'm actually working, but I don't have any data. Here we go. There And there it goes. All right. So we should see the test pattern hit one more time uh, as Windows starts to load. So the BIOS USB drivers have loaded. The splash screen for Windows is up, and I'm about to see the uh, spinning logo at the bottom, which means Windows is going to start to install. R or not install. Boot. Right... There it goes. Okay, so Windows is now loading, uh, and the drivers have shut off again. And there we go. I saw the LED blink, and there's the test pattern when Windows is coming up. So we have test patterns, and we have connectivity. We did. We do know that the buttons actually do things on the um, computer, so the buttons are actually doing keyboard input. That's usually how these controllers work. And uh, this one is ready to go back to its owner. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this Rock Band uh, LED controller repair. Uh, not the typical thing that we have on the channel. However, it was great to actually do something a little bit different, as well as get some, um, some challenges. Uh, as we can see from the dish of retired parts, in this case, uh, leaky capacitors, um, these parts were incredibly small. Here's a pair of tweezers for scale. We'll zoom in on some of those. So the parts were incredibly small, definitely in the realm of micro-soldering, so it was good to get some surface mount um, practice and micro-soldering practice again. Uh, haven't done micro-SMD stuff in a while, so it's good to stay in, uh, stay in tune, especially with some videos we have coming up from the channel. I've had a lot of requests for some 2000 series tech scope stuff. I do have some 2000 series tech scopes in line for the bench, but the... Um, Microsoldering is going to actually come into play on some of those scopes, so dealing with SMD components and a few other things, we are going to have to um, dive a little bit deeper. Uh, these little dispensers, which I've talked about in a previous video, these worked very, very well. So as you can see, the part's hiding underneath, and it actually did very well with these deeper parts. But if I pull this up top, I can dispense one capacitor at a time. So these worked really, really well. Uh, working with these capacitors. Um, I ordered 100 parts because I usually order spares, which we talked about in a previous video. And uh, they didn't all fit in one, so I did have to split it to two. But I got about 75 in one and probably 25 in the other, maybe 60, 70, 30, something like that. So 50 would fit in here probably comfortably. I got more than half, but I ordered 100, so I had to deal with what with what came in. So... With that, let me know what you guys think in the description below. As always, more is on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video. Bye for now.